We're going to call the meeting to order at 7.02. Uh, welcome, everyone, to our May 23rd school committee meeting. My name is Susan Prewindowski, and after our elections, we reorganized our school committee, and this year I will be the chair. I'd um, like to congratulate Rachel King for newly elected to the school committee, and also to congratulate Mr. Hammond, Mr. Dolan, and Mr. Gelfi, who should be here shortly, for being reelected to the school committee. Um, and let's just introduce our school committee members. We have Julie Scoparis on the end with Mrs. Holbrook, Mr. Dolan, um, Mr. Swenson, our superintendent, Mr. Hammond, school committee, and Rachel King. And with that, we'll start with our Pledge of Allegiance. The flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. And I'd like to start with our approval of minutes. And first up will be the April 24th, 2018 minutes. Do I have a motion to approve the minutes? So moved. So moved. Motion by Mr. Hammond, second by Mr. Dolan. Any discussion? Motion to approve the minutes. Oh, so moved. Did so moved. Did I? Did I? You did that. Now you yeah. need to just ask for the vote. For the vote. <laughs> <laughs> vote to approve the minutes. All those in favor. All those in favor. Aye. Aye. Any opposed? All right. Let's see if we can get the May 1st meeting. Motion, Motion to approve the May 1st meeting. Minutes. Motion by Mr. Hammond, second by Mrs. Holbrook. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? So voted. Thank you very much. Moving on to correspondence and recognition. Mr. Swenson. Thank you, Madam Chair. This evening, I would like to invite Mr. Paul Jovalos, who's a special ed uh, administrator, to come up to talk about our Therapeutic Day program and a wonderful initiative that they took on uh, this past month in regards to a stuffed animal project oh, with him. Oh, there he goes. Oh, very cool. Yep. And is the teacher from our Therapeutic Day program, Ms. Liz Alon, and our school adjustment counselor, Ms. Jen Holman. So welcome. Thank you very much. Good evening, Madam Chair, members of the school committee, uh, Superintendent Swenson. Um, congratulations, Madam Chair and uh, um, Ms. King, our new, um, our new member. Um, very excited tonight um, to uh, be here with Liz and Jen, uh, names that you've probably heard uh, several times and have heard praise of um, as the high school team for our Therapeutic Day program. Um, I'm here tonight to tell you about a project that we took on. We brought a prop for you to for see and uh, interact with as we, uh, as we do our presentation as well. Uh, the students in the high school classroom um, were um, brought the idea by Kate Dyer, uh, the president of our uh, Special Education Parents Advisory Council, uh, to create these um, weighted stuffed animals, which uh, is actually a sensory tool for, for students and a uh, calming and, and soothing strategy uh, used by students, uh, comparable to a, a weighted blanket or something like that, but a little bit more uh, fun and interactive. Um, uh, so Ms. Dyer came to us with this service project idea uh, sh she used uh, CPAC funds to purchase uh, poly pellets, and then we had donations made of several uh, stuffed animals, uh, 10 large size, four pounders, and 14 small size, two to three pound uh, stuffed animals, uh, which many of our students donated as well, uh, and then did the project of uh, making a small incision and inserting the poly pellets and sewing them back up um, to um, eventually have them go to many classrooms across our district. Um, teachers at the Mitchell Elementary School, La Liber La Liberty Elementary School, Williams Intermediate School, and uh, the district preschool uh, all received um, some of these uh, weighted stuffed animals um, that the, the students have uh, enjoyed and, um, as uh, Miss Maloney at the Mitchell School uh, put it, uh, have been loved hard uh, since, <laughs> since, they, since they were received. Um, uh, but we're uh, really proud of the students, and actually at the Mitchell School, the students got to deliver uh, the uh, weighted stuffed animals to the three classrooms uh, at the Mitchell School themselves and see how uh, excited the students were to receive them. Um, so it was just a, a great, uh, well-rounded activity and, and part of a lot of the service learning uh, and community um, learning that students do uh, at the Therapeutic Day program. Uh, the students in our middle school classroom also have a hydroponic tower, which was uh, generously donated by Ms. Thomas, uh, our Director of Student Services, and they uh, harvest from the hydroponic tower and, and sell those uh, 
fruits and vegetables in our uh, um, break room at, at our admin office. They do bake sales frequently to benefit local animal shelters. So really try to uh, insti instill a, um, a feeling of pride uh, in our students for some of the work that they do at the, at the therapeutic day program. Uh, it's just uh, one small smart uh, part of what we do um, and are very, very proud of. Uh, we have a, a wonderful team uh, in addition to um, Liz and Jen. Uh, Peter Pina, uh, our paraprofessional for the program is here as well. Uh, we were hoping to have uh, a couple students here this evening. Uh, one had a, a baseball game, so uh, it looks like they might be running a little bit late, but um, they were all very proud uh, nonetheless to be uh, recognized by the school committee uh, when, we, when we shared this with them. Okay. Well, thank you. I just want to say, and I say it every year when we bring folks up from the Therapeutic Day program, that program that was started has, has saved so many lives of our kids and impacted so many futures of our kids. And, and that's a testament to what Ms. Albon does every day, and Ms. Holton does, Mr. Pina, and everyone involved with that program and the middle school program. And I love the fact that these students, who sometimes have dealt with some adversity in their lives and end up in that therapeutic program to get that thera therapeutic support, actually took on a project that will help other students with similar situations. So I think that sense of giving back and paying it forward is outstanding. So thank you for everything you do and thank the kids. They're wonderful kids. We see them each and every day. And I like the fact that we were over at the high school this morning and saw a couple of them actually coming in to the building who've transitioned back to the general program for even if it's just for a partial day initially. But that's always the goal and you guys did such a wonderful job with that. So thank you. Thank you for the recognition as well. Thank you. Yes, Madam Chair, the second under um, correspondence and recognition. Tonight we were trying to get our rainwater players here, but it's a very busy time of the year, <laughs> as everybody knows, uh, with senior events and end of year events. But I just want to let you know that I went, and I know members of the committee went as well a few weeks back, and it was outstanding. Um, the rainwater production of Footloose. As a kid of the 80s, it brought me back. So uh, I didn't realize how many songs I actually knew. That actually came from. So, um, and they were outstanding, and I say it every year. You go to these productions, and you see the sets, you see the costumes, but then you see the talent that our kids have. And it, you forget for a minute that you're actually at a high school play. They do such an outstanding job. And they, the, the, the crew that moves the, the set and, and those types of things, and the situation where we have um, members of our uh, musical, and I believe Ryan was actually uh, in a cat. Would you like to hum a few bars for us of Footloose solo? No. no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but it, it, it was outstanding, and I can't say enough about what Mrs. White and all of the folks do at the high school for Rainwater. So, and I know some other folks went to the play as well. It so, was wonderful. it was wonderful as always. So, thank you, Ryan, and everyone in, involved. Thank you, sir. And lastly, we have um, some correspondence from Mrs. Griffin, who is the uh, music teacher at the high school. And this is about the Music in the Parks Festival and on um, the Bridgewater Rainham uh, Regional High School Music Department had a very successful experience on the weekend of May 12th and 13th at the Music in the Park Festival. The Bridgewater Rainham Regional High School won five trophies. Um, first concert choir came in first place, mixed choir one, with an excellent rating. Our chamber singers came in first place, mixed chorus two, with an excellent rating. Chorus band uh, finished in second place with a superior rating, but only finished three quarters of a point behind the first place. Our chamber singers got best overall choir, and the women's choir had an excellent rating. So a very successful day for our um, band and music program at the um, high school. And just a side note, Mrs. Uh, Griffin wanted with us to know that more importantly, our kiddos were amazing ambassadors for the Bridgewater Random Regional High School Music Program. All of the student musicians arrived on time and interacted respectfully with chaperones and their peers. They cheered each other on and were upbeat, enthusiastic, despite some inclement weather. These student musicians, once again, brought great pride and honor to our district. Great job, kiddos, and she just wanted to thank you for all that. And I did want to thank um, all of the wonderful uh, music educators that we have throughout the district and who are in attendance, and also all of the incredible parent, garden, uh, guardian, volunteers who chaperone the event as well. So thank you to all of you folks as well. Very good. Thank you, Mr. Swenson. I'm not sure if we have any. Is there anyone here from the band? 
Uh, Riot again. <laughs> so, Riot, would you like to sing something from the chamber singers? Uh, I'm going to have to pass All right. All right. Uh, that's all we have, Madam Chair. Right. And I do have one piece of correspondence um, from Mr. Marrero, who could not be with us tonight. He's um, doing military exercises. And he had written an email to Senator Pacheco. Uh, as the new school committee legislative liaison for the Bridgewater Rainham School, I would like to ask for your support in Senate Budget Amendments number 242 and 161, which will increase funding for regional school transportation, money that Massachusetts promised to regional school districts since Massachusetts began regionalizing. This account is short funded by millions of dollars every single year, putting the burden on our schools and local taxpayers. Your assistance would be greatly appreciated. Thank you. And he emailed that on Tuesday, May 22nd, and he received a reply. Kevin, please be advised that Senator Bachico was a co-sponsor of amended, Amendment 242. He has always supported the maximum possible funding for regional school transportation and will continue to do so. And that was signed by Mary Wozlick, the Chief of Staff of the Office of Senate President Pro Tempore Mark Pacheco. So that would be another correspondence. Thank you. Thank you. And we'll move on to educational reports. And I believe Mrs. Holbrook is going to do the student council report. I am. Thank you, Madam Chair. This evening will be the final student advisory council report for the 2017-2018 school year. Thank you once again to the Student Advisory Council members, Sam, Jake, Katie, Emma, Ryan, and Rachel. Your work to prepare and present monthly updates has been an invaluable opportunity for all of us to gain insight into the high school activities from a student's perspective. The strong sense of pride that you have in your school is admirable. To our three seniors, Katie, Jake, and Sam, have a safe and happy summer. We wish you well next year as you begin your next chapter. To Emma, Ryan, and Rachel, we hope you have a wonderful summer as well and be safe and hope to see you back next year. I would also like to thank Miss Kristen McCord, um, who without her guidance and support, none of this would be possible. Ms. McCord would now like to say a few words about our departing seniors. Good evening. Um, my name is Kristen McCord. I'm a history teacher at the high school, for those of you that don't know me. Um, I just wanted to thank all of you on behalf of the board for allowing us to come up here every month and for them to tell you all the great things that are going on at the high school. And just to thank these kids who come to the meetings every week and help put the reports together um, as you probably know, most of them are involved in clubs or sports or activities, and they're still very committed to it, and they do a really great job. Um, some of them are new to the board this year, Ryan and Emma and Jake, and some of them are returning, Katie and Rachel is both their second year. And this is my third year doing it. It's also Sam's third year doing it, so we kind of came into this together here. So um, I'm very sad to see our seniors go, Katie. And Jake couldn't be here tonight. Katie's on the lacrosse team, and um, Jake is on the baseball team, and they both had games tonight. But they wanted us to also thank you all on their behalf. Um, we wanted to wish our seniors the best of luck in the future, too. Sam's going to be going to Bryant University, where he's going to be studying finance. Katie's going to be going to Keene State, where she is going to be studying elementary education. And Jake is going to be going to UMass Amherst, where he's going to be studying history and political science. And ultimately, he hopes to also um, join the Marine Corps. So I just wanted to thank them and thank you guys for another great school year. So thank you. So uh, before we begin, we'd also just like to thank Ms. McCord. Um, without her, we, this would not be possible. She helps us so much in the mornings with our meetings, putting together the presentations, so and uh, these meetings, of course. So as a little appreciation, we got you a little gift. So. Thank you. So, um, as you guys heard, tomorrow is the last full day for seniors, um, uh, and. At the end of the day tomorrow, our first exam will be held last period, and we have a lot of fun upcoming events for our, our class, which we are all excited about. 
First, the senior prom will take place this Friday, May 25th, at Lake Pearl and Rentham. And then on Tuesday, we'll be, we will be doing our senior walk at the elementary schools, where we dress in our caps and gowns and walk through the elementary schools to say hi to all of the younger students of the Bridgewater Rainham School District. On Thursday, May 31st, BR seniors will have their annual senior banquet at the Holiday Inn. On this night, students and teachers celebrate the end of the seniors' academic careers with music, food, and yearbook signings. After the banquet, students have their annual senior lock-in, one of the most anticipated and fun nights of the year, right at, right at the high school where games, shows, and raffles are conducted throughout the night. On June 4th, the BR Sports Awards will be held in order to recognize the achievements of BR student athletes. And finally, the BR senior class will graduate on Sunday, June 3rd, and we want to wish all the members of the class of 2018 the best of luck in their future endeavors. And as you guys know, this is my last meeting. It's I've been three years, and I'd just like to say thank you to all of you. It's been really fun and definitely a new experience, so thank you. Thank you, thank you. Sam. Good evening, school committee. My name is Ryan LaCivita, and today I will be giving updates on the Great East Festival, our teacher appreciation project, and uh, the speech and theater play that is going on. So the music department attended the Great East Festival on Saturday, May 12th. They competed with bands and choral groups from around the state and did well in their different, in their different competitions. The chorus got an excellent rating. The chambers also got an excellent rating and a first overall in their division. And the band got second place in a superior rating, which was their first superior rating uh, at all in general. And we did have fun even though it was very rainy at Six Flags and it was a great experience. Um, and at the beginning of May, we completed the Student Advisory Board Spring Project for Teacher Appreciation. We asked each senior to fill out an appreciation letter form for one teacher who really impacted them during their time in high school, and we passed out these Teacher Appreciation Day forms on May 8th. Many teachers told us how appreciative they were of this, and we were excited to help make their day that much more special. We hope to continue doing this in the years to come. And the speech and theater class will be putting on their year-end performance on May 29th at 3 p.m. at the high school. This year they are perform performing a murder mystery entitled Who Done It, which was written by BR students. If you have a free afternoon, come check out all their hard work. And I want to say thank you as a first-year sophomore. This was really fun to do. I really liked presenting and telling everybody about all the activities. And I really do hope I can come back next year for more. So thank you. Um, hello, my name is Emma Snellgrove, and today I will be reporting on Student Government Day and Special Advisory. Next Thursday, May 31st, we will, we will, be, will be Bridgewater Rainham Student Government Day. This tradition is celebrated each year to allow students in the district to get to know the function of their town governments and school systems. Fifty junior students are signed up, including myself, who will be the town clerk for the day. One group will spend the day at the central office with members of the school committee and administration. Another group will go to the Bridgewater Town Hall with Ms. McCord, and a third group will go to the Rainham Town Hall with Mrs. Murdoch. These students will listen to speakers and shadow town officials for the morning before heading back to BR for a student lunch. On Wednesday, May 16th, BR held a special hour and a half long advisory block for all the students at the high school. During this time, juniors and seniors were giving a presentation on prom safety, which included a discussion and a Q&A with a panel of distinguished law enforcement guests, as well as a video and a live reenactment re -enactment of the aftermath of a driving accident of someone who was under the influence. While this was occurring, the freshmen and sophomores were attending a research fair in the gymnasium. Students were giving a scavenger hunt map and asked to visit the booths on all different topics surrounding mental and physical well-being, as well as drug and alcohol addiction. Both of these events were great learning experiences for BR students. Um, I just want to say also to say thank you for my first year. It was really good to be a part of this, and I hope to be back, back next year. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening, school committee. My name is Rachel Maysfield, and tonight I'll be talking to you about the AP Art Send-Off, Academic Awards Night, and the Rainwater Players. On Tuesday, May 8th, the AP Art students held a send-off ceremony during the long block period three at the high school. Teachers were invited to sign up and bring their classes down to the art room. Ms. McCord brought our history class down, and we were all so impressed with the amount of talent and dedication we saw in the students' work. Their work showed their incredible talent, and I am excited to have the opportunity to take AP Art next school year. 
Last night, BR held its annual academic awards night. On this night, the junior members of the National Honor Society are inducted and students receive varying awards, including Departmental Awards, the Principals Club, Superintendents Award, and the John Riley Outstanding Achievement Award. This year, the Superintendents Award was awarded to senior Ryan Smith, who currently holds the highest grade point average for the senior class and will be class valedictorian at graduation. The John Riley Outstanding Achievement Award was given to senior James Scow. We want to congratulate all those inducted in NHS and those who received an award last night. Finally, the Rainwater players wanted to thank anyone who came to their successful performances of Footloose this year. This marks the end of our May presentation. We appreciate the opportunity you have given us each month to come and discuss all the great things going on at our school. We hope you all have a great summer. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, thank you very much. We look forward to those reports every month. There's so many things going on at the high school, and it's wonderful that you come to share them with us. Did you want to come up and shake our hands? Is the yes, last. <laughs> <laughs> Next, we have our summer reading and math packets, and that will be with Mr. Powers. <laughs> you have a large print version for the committee. <laughs> Good evening, Madam Chair, members of the school committee, Superintendent Swenson. Um, thank you for allowing me to come to the podium tonight. Um, as you know, in, in, uh, in your packets, in before you, you have the proposed summer reading and math packets for our students entering fifth grade all the way up through high school. Uh, and really the way it's broken down, and I'll just kind of give you a quick overview, is obviously we have um, English language arts packets as well as math packets. The math packets, for the most part, um, you know, very, very minor um, changes, really no major content changes to those packets, so they really, uh, you know, remain kind of in place from, from years prior. Uh, in, in terms of the ELA packets themselves, uh, the only thing that really has changed, uh, again, not necessarily the requirements and the type of work that the students have had to complete over the summer, uh, but really the titles themselves. Uh, and I can just kind of give you a quick overview uh, of those titles. For our students, uh, gr current grade four entering fifth grade students, um, the teachers are asking them to read at least one book over the summer, um, and they are giving them some suggestions. Um, one is a whole new ball game. The one and only Ivan and I survived the American Revolution. And certainly, we would love our students to read more than one book, uh, but we're asking at a very minimum uh, that they read one and at least uh, pick one of those from the list. So that's grade four going into grade five. Um, for our grade five going into grade six, students, they're being asked to read again at least one fiction book this summer, and the chosen fiction book for the students is Where the Red Fern Grows by Wilson Rawls. Uh, and being a former sixth grade teacher, I was so pl uh, pleased to see this. Uh, it's certainly one of the uh, great classics out there. If you haven't read it, I would highly encourage you to read it, especially if you're a pet owner. Um, but uh, So that'll be for our sixth grade students. Our 7th and 8th grade students are actually going to read uh, the same book. And as you remember, a couple years ago we did one book, uh, one school, uh, for our middle school students on either side of the district. And obviously, they, you know, not every student can read the same book over and over again uh, because it will certainly repeat. But what they're really trying to do is group as much as possible the same book. So our grade, seven and eight, say grade 7 and 8 students will read the book 11 by Tom Rogers. And this is um, a story about a boy who turns 11 on 9-11, uh, September 11th. So um, it, it's hopefully a, a great read. I look forward to reading it with my son, who will be going into eighth grade as well. And then obviously at the high school level, um, really it, it gets more cumbersome at the high school level for math and for ELA because each class, each subject, has a requirement. Um, so I certainly won't bore you with all those. You can see those in there. Mr. Hayhurst, uh, the department head for ELA at the high school, did make some changes. Um, some new uh, titles were added, or I shouldn't say added, but swapped out for, for other titles. Um, so you'll, you'll see those in there. I can assure you, um, and this is something that we really, Mr. Swenson and I really asked all the teachers to do, is please make sure that they vet all of these titles, that they've read these books prior to actually suggesting them. 
Um, we didn't want any necessarily surprise phone calls over the summer about content. So uh, I, I was assured that that has taken place, and the teachers are really, really excited about the selections that they've, they've chosen, uh, which will be great. Um, so you have those in front of you, um, and I would ask for your approval. Yes. Did you have any comments? No, just again, Mr. Powers does a wonderful job working with our lead teachers um, to come up with um, this idea. And obviously the idea is <clears throat> not to um, ruin anyone's summer. This is about um, kind of prevent that uh, summer slide a little bit. And to, um, as I say to my own children at home, you know, I want you outside exercising and working your muscles, but your main muscle is your brain, and you need to kind of not, um, you know, put that aside in the summer. Um, you need to really kind of keep on that learning process. So, with that being said, uh, they've done a wonderful job. I do appreciate the fact that our teachers did, um, as Mr. Power say, vet the uh, literacy uh, selections. Um, we did have a slight situation last year. We had some feedback from the community, and we wanted to make sure that this year, um, everything was age appropriate and um, they've done a wonderful job in the selections that they have made and so thank you Mr. Powers and to all of our lead teachers and all of our teachers across the district who had a hand in uh, these summer packets. Great. So do I have a motion to approve the summer reading and math packets? So motion by second. Mrs. Holbrook, second by Mr. Gelfie. Any discussion? Any questions? For all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? So voted. Thank you. And Mr. Powers, we'll have you stay there for our curriculum Absolutely. overview. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and, and just to add one thing to summer reading and math, obviously it's for our grades 5 through 12 students, uh, but please note that the, you know, the lower grades do have optional summer work. You know, they, they, um, so they don't necessarily give them titles, but they give them suggestions of books, um, different math work that they can do. But it, because it is optional and not necessarily mandatory, and some of the schools, uh, you know, participate in different reading incentive programs. Um, so, it, you know, it's it's not just happening 5 through 12, it's happening across the grade levels, but obviously we don't necessarily make it mandatory at, at the younger grade, so I just wanted to add that as well. Uh, but for uh, this evening's curriculum update, um, two uh, pieces of information that I'd like to share with you to start. Uh, the La Liberty Elementary School, the Merrill Elementary School, and the George Mitchell Elementary School were a, uh, awarded a grant through ST Math. As you know, uh, we use GG and ST Math on a daily basis uh, for our elementary students. and. Uh, ST Math actually um, put out a grant opportunity for schools that were currently participating in ST Math and districts that wanted to come on board. And the main difference now is they're going to provide uh, a, a extra professional development where they really, on an ongoing basis, haven't necessarily provided professional development. It was something I think when Mr. Swenson brought that in, there was initial PD offered, uh, but this is really going to be um, on-site training by ST Math, and then they're also going to um, identify an ST Math champion. Uh, it'll be one staff member at every school that will really lead the charge um, uh, further in terms of professional development and really become uh, a certified ST Math trainer, uh, if you will say. So, you know, the, the um, opportunities um, exist out there for us to certainly expand this, uh, which we're pretty excited about, and really uh, just the amount of time that they're committing to those three schools into the district um, is just you know is, is fabulous and mr. Swenson and I uh, you know have a co close relationship with our ST math partners and we were just very excited to hear that we were going to be able to uh, participate in this grant so it'll be a good opportunity for us and for our students and really for our teachers um, you know who are using this program um, extensively but now they'll have additional uh, professional development on this program which will certainly make a difference so very uh, very pleased to share that with you uh, the other thing I'm proud to announce is that the Bridgewater Rainham Regional High School applied for a grant through the Plymouth County um, uh, task force uh, youth prevention task force um, and uh, district attorney Cruz and Sheriff McDonald uh, offered a grant to area districts to help drug endangered children um, not necessarily children that are um, under the influence themselves or using or abusing drugs uh, certainly that may be the case but children that may be a victim or have family members that uh, might be involved in um, drug activity and so really the focus of this grant uh, focus of this grant is to look at how um, you know those at-risk behaviors can possibly impact the brain and then potentially impact learning so the training will be helping traumatized children learn uh, and it'll be offered by mass advocates for children uh, who partner with the Harvard Law School uh, we're actually fortunate to have these trainers in our district last year um, and even this year at the Merrill School and so they'll be coming out to work with a high school as well so that's a uh, again a, a free professional development opportunity for us through 
the DA's office, and um, obviously they'll be getting resources as well to walk away with a, a textbook um, as well and some additional training. So I just wanted to share that. And um, lastly, uh, Mr. Swenson and I certainly, you know, we, we always self-reflect about our students and what we uh, hope that they become, and you can certainly see by our fine uh, student council uh, representatives that they, our students are second to none. But that being said, uh, so we've been doing a, 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 a survey activity or an inventory activity with our teachers, and we did it with our administrators, and I'm going to propose that we actually conduct this activity with the school committee, uh, possibly before our next meeting. I know Ms. McDougal was going to try to coordinate that. And we posed the question, what does a BR grad look like? Or what do we, what really, what do we want a BR grad to look like? And the reason why we're doing this activity is, you know, we're trying to identify what knowledge, what skills, and what uh, pro-social skills, feelings, emotions that we want our students leaving the district with. And we really feel as though this is something that, from preschool all the way up to grade 12, um, as administrators, as school committee members, as parents, that we have a responsibility to make sure that our students are graduating uh, with those skills. And so we, we did an um, activity at, at, at some different meetings uh, where we, we've done an inventory surveying. Uh, they've created charts and diagrams, which has been great. Um, Mr. Swenson and I were partners, uh, so we also had not just a, a, the administrator lens, but lenses as, as parents as well in the district. And what we're going to do, I'm going to be working with Ms. Watson on the high school staff to actually talk about what do our BR grads look like now. And so what we're hoping to do is be able to identify if they exist gaps. You know, this is what we'd like our graduates to look like. This is what they currently look like. And so what do we need to do to, to close that gap? Not necessarily even an achievement. We were talking, I think every group came up with with empathy. We would like our students to be empathetic uh, towards others and have those skills and understanding of, of others and be so much more inclusive. Um, and I think our students do a great job of that, but how can we get them to even be better? And so, you know, we might currently look and say, and I don't think this is the case, but this is just an example, maybe our students aren't that empathetic now. Okay, so what do we need to do to close that gap? Um, so we're, we're just trying to get all the stakeholders involved again. You know, we, we've had some parents share their ideas on the various committees, administrators, teachers, and uh, we'd love to get your input as well. So I know Ms. McDougall will try to coordinate that before the, the next meeting and maybe just have you come in a few minutes early if possible and kind of put you through that exercise. Um, and, and the reason why we're doing this is obviously one, to close that gap, but this also helps us when we're developing our strategic you know, goals, um, our strategic plan, uh, really where do we want the district to go and why? Well, it's all about kids and we know that. So we really wanna make sure that we're looking at that at the, as, a, as an end result. Um, so if you'd be so uh, agreeable, uh, I'll have Ms. McDougall uh, schedule that if that's uh, possible uh, and that very includes good. my very curriculum good. report. Very good. Thank you. Did anyone have any questions for Mr. Powers? I think that survey is fantastic. Yeah, yeah. I think yeah. that's a great idea. Yeah. Yeah. Mr. Powers did a great job of, of bringing that question forward and sharing it with our lead teachers. We brought it to admin council and it's and as you said as he said we were partners in it and we have the lens of educators but as parents as well so we want we know what we want our own children to have but at the end of the day we have the responsibility to make sure that along with our families that we are incorporating these things into our students um, on, on a daily basis and it doesn't necessarily mean as mr powers just said if we if we identify a gap that we necessarily have to create maybe an entire course to address that but how are things that, like with empathy how can we then incorporate it into the everyday activities within our building which then become ingrained within the climate and culture of our buildings and um, it, it, it's great to see what the different viewpoints of um, our K all the way up to 12 uh, views are of, of our students and again using this as a self-reflective exercise to make sure that we are producing the best grads out there which I think we do a fabulous job of right now but like everything else everything's a work in progress and we can always find room to improve so I appreciate bringing that exercise in Mr. Powers. All right. very good. <clears throat> Thank you very much. Uh, moving on to administrative and school committee reports uh, we have a budget subcommittee report from the new budget chair Mrs. Coparis. Oh. Okay um, the budget subcommittee met on May 16th at 6 30 uh, the committee is made up of myself, Mr. Dolan, Dr. Kumandowski, and Mr. Gelfi. Uh, Mr. Dolan was not present. He had a prior commitment to this particular meeting. Um, each month, our Director of Facilities, Mr. Paul Fox, provides us with an update of district-wide repairs and maintenance, <coughs> and you'll hear from him a little later. Um, Ms. Macedo reported that the FY budget is in good shape. The substitute line of the budget has an overall improvement over last year of, through April 30th of $65,000, which we are obviously pleased with. 
Um, Mr. Fox and Ms. Macedo have been working on locking in a more cost-effective energy rate for the district's electricity, and Ms. Macedo will be bringing the information forward later this evening under new business. And the Budget Subcommittee would like to recommend and present the following items for approval to the full committee. The district, under the advisement of the State, Massachusetts, and Mass General Laws, Chapter 71, Section 16, G and a half, may deposit into its stabilization, pension, and other post-employment benefits account an amount not exceeding 5% of the prior year's fiscal year budget, so in this case, fiscal year 18's budget. The district strives to, to deposit 10000 each year, pending its sufficient funds to do so. The purpose is to, uh, for future financial planning and to maintain the district's A1 bond rating. So in, uh, that being said, in the form of a motion, I recommend on behalf of the Budget Subcommittee a motion to allocate the transfer of $10,000 from the Excess and Deficiency Fund to deposit into the Stabilization Fund pending sufficient fiscal year 18 balances. Motion by Mrs. Gilparis, a second. second by Mr. Gelfi. Any discussion? Mm -hmm. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? So voted. Okay. I also make a motion to approve the transfer of $10,000 from the Excess and Deficiency Fund to deposit into the Pension Fund pending sufficient fiscal year 18 balances. A motion by Mrs. Gilpera, second, second by Mr. Gelfi. Uh, any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? So voted. Okay. Um, and the third one would be a motion to allocate funds from the Excess and Deficiency Fund to deposit $10,000 into the OPEB, which stands for the Other Post Employee Benefits Fund, pending sufficient F fiscal year 18 balances. And motion by Mrs. Gilparis. Second. Second by Mrs. King. Uh, any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? So voted. Okay. Um, the Bridgewater Re Regional School District is on a bi-weekly payroll system, and each year the school committee must approve the schedule for payroll and warrants. So and we have a schedule here. And um, I would like to make a motion to approve the fiscal year 19 payroll and warrant schedules as presented. Motion by Mrs. Gopara, second by Mrs. Holbrook. Any discussion on the payroll and warrant schedule? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? So voted. And does that you conclude your report? Yeah, we talked about the fiscal year 19 budget, but um, I'm going to let the treasurer speak to that. So we're good for now until the energy contract comes up. Very good. Moving on to the Mitchell School Building Project update. Mr. Swanson. <coughs> Thank you, Madam Chair. As previously reported, uh, Bridgewater Rain Regional School District <coughs> is currently in the feasibility study phase of the MSBA process in regards to the George H. Mitchell Elementary School. Uh, the district has recently hired Daedalus Project Incorporated as our owner's project managers, with the next step in the process being the hiring of an architectural firm that will begin um, exploring options for a possible repair, renovation, or reconstruction of the George Mitchell Elementary School. On Tuesday, May 8th, uh, the Bridgewater Random Regional School District Director of Facilities, Paul Fox, Bridgewater Town Manager Michael Dunn, and myself had a very productive meeting at the MSBA with the design board. We collectively selected three of the five architectural firms that applied for our request for services, which is also referred to as an RFS, for interviews. The designers that made the short list are Raymond Design Associates Incorporated, T2 or Trabowski 2 Architectural Incorporated, and Studio G Architects. Yesterday, Tuesday, May 22nd, the interviews were conducted at the MSBA offices. We are incredibly pleased and impressed with all the highly qualified candidates. After much deliberation and debate, a firm was decided upon, and that firm is Raymond Design Associates and Incorporated, pending negotiations. We are still in the negotiation phase. So if all goes well with negotiation process, we'll be moving forward with RDA um, as our architectural firm. I uh, just would like to take this opportunity to thank <coughs> the Director of Facilities, Mr. Paul Fox, Town Manager, of Bridgewater, Mr. Michael Dutton, and all the members of the MSBA selection panel who joined me yesterday and took time to participate in the interview process. 
I would also like to thank all the hardworking members of our school building committee, uh, which includes Mr. Dolan and uh, Mrs. Holbrook, who serve on that committee, for all their time and efforts <clears throat> getting us to this point. And um, very last but not least, all of the residents of uh, Bridgewater who voted to appropriate the funds for the feasibility phase study. And um, please know that all of the collective efforts are recognized and greatly appreciated. In the meantime, <clears throat> while um, the negotiation portion is going on. If anyone ever has any questions in regards to the MSBA process or any related questions, please uh, feel free to contact me at uh, dswenson at bridge-rain.org or at 508-279-2140, extension 113. Great. Do you feel that the negotiations would be finished by our next school committee meeting? Oh, yes. Okay. I, 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 my hope is, if, if all goes well, um, our OPM right now, um, uh, the firm Daedalus is now uh, kind of working with RDA to put together a proposal. Uh, they'll submit that proposal to us. Uh, I sat down with Mrs. Macedo today and, and Mr. Fox, and we kind of strategized on our end. We, do, we did submit as Appendix A to all of the um, information we had to submit to MSBA a four line item budget where that uh, monies that um, was voted upon up to 800,000 we had to kind of put fill in each of the line items um, one of the line items being the OPM which we've already uh, put online which through what we put in there what actually we negotiated was about twenty thousand dollars less <clears throat> so in conversations today Obviously, we want to be fair with, with the designer, but we also have a responsibility to the taxpayers of Bridgewater. So we want to make sure that um, you know, we, we, get, we, get a, we get a fair price and they're able to have enough um, monies and resources to get the job done effectively. Um, but as my father always told me, a great negotiation was when both people walk away unhappy. So <laughs> I'm sure we're not going to get exactly what we want. They're not going to get what we want, but hopefully we can meet in the middle and really start to move this process forward because we are starting to see some light at the end of that tunnel now. Once we get the designer on, it should start to move pretty quickly. And I know that a lot of folks out there, you know, will call and ask about the process and why is it taking so long. It's taking so long because we're moving at the speed of government. And the bottom line is if we want to receive funding from the state, we have to check all the boxes and there's a process to it. But I would also say that it's a very thorough process and obviously there's a lot of criteria that needs to be met and that's a good thing because we want to make sure whatever project we move forward with does not have the same end result of the one that's sitting on 500 mm. South Street currently. So. With that being said, that is the update. And if anyone has any questions from the committee, I'd be happy to ask of them. Any questions from the committee? Well, thank you very much yeah. for your time. By the time you're done, you'll be a building expert. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, the facilities department report, Mr. Fox could not be here tonight, so Mr. Swenson. Yes, I'm going I, to fill in for him. And uh, Mr. Fox behaved this month. He didn't spend all that much money. <laughs> mine. So um, I just wanted to report out one project that we definitely needed to address, <clears throat> especially with the upcoming um, graduation um, at, at the high school. Uh, the district has entered an agreement with Access AV <clears throat> in the amount of $9,174 to, to restore the high school gymnasium sound to its optimal performance abilities. Um, Access AV will be installing a new uh, amplifier system that are designed to provide appropriate power to the speakers, which are currently underpowered. A control system will also be uh, installed, which will set limits for the user and protect the system. Also uh, introduced are a CD auxiliary connector, mixer and high performance wireless microphone, and all designed to provide high quality experience. The district is expected to have this system up and running by graduation. And I just want to thank um, Mr. Fox, but also Jeff Fowler from BTV, who um, has really been um, a real asset to the district when it comes to um, our audio audiovisual needs. And um, he had some um, experience with uh, this particular vendor and has had a great experience with them. So um, they did a full assessment not only of the gymnasium, but we are going to have to address some issues in our auditorium and also at the football stadium as well. But I told Mr. 
box let's prioritize let's get the uh, projects done that are of the greatest need and right now it would be the high school gym with the big event of uh, graduation coming next weekend very good thank you very much thank you and moving on to the treasurer's report mr conley good evening madam chairman members of the school committee superintendent swenson I just wanted to report back to the school committee the assessment letter that I would that I delivered to uh, Bridgewater and Raynham. As a result of the Bridgewater Raynham Regional School District's committee meeting held on April 4th, 2018, the amounts due the Bridgewater Raynham Regional School District for the fiscal year 2019 from the towns of Bridgewater and Raynham are as follows: minimum contributions as required by the Commonwealth of Mass. Bridgewater was $20,755,678. Raynham was $13,318,750. Shared non-discretionary charges and additional funding. Transportation in Bridgewater pays 59.77% was $2,220,883. Raynham was $1,494,917. Raynham pays 40.23%. Mr. Mr. Conley, can you just slow down just a hair? Oh, We're sure. Just trying I'm sorry. To write the numbers <laughs> as you're talking. I'm sorry. <laughs> My apologies. <laughs> Start all over again, or no? Uh, no? Just the Bridgewater number, the twenty million, if you could. Twenty million seven fifty five six seventy eight. Raynham, thirteen three eighteen seven fifty. Again, Bridgewater with the transportation at fifty nine point seven seven two million. Two hundred twenty thousand eight hundred eighty three dollars. Raynham at forty point two three per cent is one million four ninety four nine hundred seventeen dollars. Necessary operational funds again with the same percentages. Bridgewater would be four million six hundred seven dollars and eight. Six hundred seven thousand eight sixty five. Raynham, again, the same percentage, forty point two three. It's three million one hundred and one thousand two hundred sixty three dollars. And that's the uh, total, ex which excludes debt. Bridgewater would be twenty seven million five hundred eighty four thousand four hundred twenty six dollars. Raynham, seventeen million nine hundred fourteen thousand nine hundred thirty dollars. The net debt for Bridgewater would be two million seven thousand six hundred thirty-seven dollars and thirty-four cents. For Raynham, would be one million five forty-two six seventeen twenty. And the total certified amounts due for 2019, Bridgewater, $29,592,063.34. Raynham, $19,457,547.20. And that was hand delivered to both Bridgewater and Raynham back on April 6th. I wanted to report back to the committee. I'd also like to thank the members of the Budget Subcommittee and all the people that helped to put this together, Kathy Macedo, Judy McDougall, Meg Keohane, Natasha Robichaud, Carla Babalola, and uh, any others that I might have missed because I don't want to do that. So. Thank you. Any questions for Mr. Conley? So I have actually a question. So you delivered those letters. Do we get a check Jan uh, July 1 from them? How does that? Um, their payment, their, we get a payment every month from, from both towns. It's split from both towns for the debt and for the, um, and for the other uh, amounts. Okay. I had a question on a completely different topic. Are you finished with your report? I, I have a couple other oh, things perfect. that are different yeah. from the report, so if you don't mind. No, not at all. Okay. <laughs> um, we had assumed or, or, or thought that we would... Um, earn about $45,000 in interest um, from the money that we have in, in the bank account. Uh, as of April, 
uh, we have um, received six sixty nine thousand four hundred thirty five dollars which is a very good increase and we still have uh, May and June to go we made a couple of switches with some of the accounts that we have a little bit of interest has gone up but um, we've done very well for that and I, th I think we've done you know excellent trying to trying to get that done um, the second thing with uh, just and I've mentioned this before with with preschool billing and collection everything went great this year everybody's paid I don't I'm not chasing anyone I feel very good about that and again I, I have to thank the people that helped me um, Tracy Dina uh, Natasia Kyle they all did a great job putting it all together and making sure that if they had to get a letter out or get a notice out that was, it was all taken care of and I, I think it'll be it's going to be a little bit better next year I don't know how much better it can get but it, it's going to be definitely better um, next year and the last thing that I have and it was mentioned earlier um, and I, I got this notice today um, announcing good news the Senate adopted limits on charter, charter school expansion and also voted in favor of the amendment 242 which was mentioned earlier which would increase regional transportation reimbursement to sixty eight million eight hundred seventy eight thousand six hundred seventy nine dollars I got that from from the association that I association that I belong to. So that's an increase from seventy three percent to eighty percent. Thank you, Mr. Carmen. Is that the final? That's the well, that's pending. pending. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. I just had a, a quick question. Um, I believe at the previous meeting you had mentioned that you were still collecting the reports from the parent groups and the other groups in the school district and I was just curious if you had received them all the uh, reports I think I have two more that I have to receive and I've just talked to the committee and they've all been very good about being in touch with me and you know they, they've been great and just making sure that they have everything that I need and I've given them I've told them exactly what I need but they've been very very good yes yes very good Thank anyone you. Any other questions for Mr. Oh, Conley? Very good. Thank you no, very, thank much. You very much. Thank you, Mr. Conley. <laughs> and next up, we have the annual health report and the Seabird? Yes. Espert. Espert. Oh, I knew I was going to mess that up. Review <laughs> by Mrs. Fahey. Thank you, Dr. Prewindowski, uh, Mr. Swenson, and members of the school committee. I'm just going to share with you a brief um, health services update and go over a little bit about the Espert program, which we initiated with grade nine this year and, and we started with grade eight last year. Um, if you were able to look at the annual report, the school nurses have been very busy this school year. Typically, there are over 6,000 visits to our health office each month. And I'm just gonna share um, just a snippet of what goes on in a typical month. For instance, in the month of March of this year, there were 6,331 visits to the health office there were 974 scheduled medications given, 350 PRN medications, 267 students were dismissed, and 6,064 returned to class, making our return to class rate 95.8, which is good. We did 5,168 daily procedures. That includes blood pressures, blood glucose monitoring, peak flows, pulse oximetry, things like that. Um, and there were 36 classroom um, or staff presentations by the school nurses that month. So on average, um, what we've been seeing this year, the school nurses are seeing between 40 and 130 students per day in, in all of the health offices. I recently completed the status report for the Department of Public Health, and children who have a special health care need number 1,663 in our district. Um, the breakdown of figures does not adequately reflect the underreported number of children with mental health illnesses. Um, as I've mentioned at previous meetings, I have seen an escalation of children with anxiety and depression across grade levels in recent years. And I am very grateful to this administration for being so proactive on looking at social emotional curriculums for our students. Um, to foster their uh, coping skills and build some resiliency. Two programs that I'm proud of um, this year that continue are the SOS Signs of Suicide Prevention Program that we provide to all grade eight and grade 10 students. 
nursing guidance and the school adjustment counselors at the high school collaborate on this screening program. Um, the biggest gratification is knowing that we're helping a student or students that really were not on our radar as a result of doing the program and doing the screening inventory. It's really hard um, trying to break down the stigma attached with mental illness, but I think we are starting to make a dent in it and children are feeling more comfortable coming and asking for help. The second program I wanted to talk to you about, and I gave you some extra information on it, is the SBIRT program. That stands for, the acronym stands for Screening for Bre and Brief Intervention and Referral for Treatment. We are mandated um, to provide SBIRT screening for one grade at the middle and one grade at the high school level. We chose grade eight and grade nine because they're two transitional type years and ev all the students can benefit by hearing some of the message a second time, even though it's only a year later. Um, we have found that to be beneficial. This is a private one-on-one -on -one conversation and screening done with each student and the school nurse. So we do each student individually. This is not a drug test. This is not a urine or blood test. <laughs> and we modified and tweaked our brochure so that parents would understand that. They always get an opt out if they don't want their child to participate. And this year we only had a total of, we had 12 opt outs in grade eight and only seven I think in grade nine. So for a total of 19. And we screened a total of 754 students individually one on one. Um, I gave you a sample of the questions that we asked during the SBIRT screening. It's called the craft screening tool. Um, and I'll allude to some of the responses that we got that were to make note of. Um, we know that not all the students answer every question truthfully, and that's okay. This is still an opportunity to share information with the students and provide them with resources to take home all of the students left our meeting with them with a folder like this to bring home with a lot of different resource materials that we um, got from our Bridging Lives Coalition, we got from the CDC, um, and we tried to be as colorful and you know interactive with them as we could so that this was a talking point while we had them with us. And I think it was appreciated, at least I hope it was, <laughs> by them. Okay, um, so there were a total of um, 35 positive car responses, and you can see on the questionnaire, the car question was, have you ever ridden in a car driven by someone who was high or had been using alcohol or drugs? So the majority of students said no, and even if they said no, we discussed it a little bit further what if in the future, if you were in a situation, how would you, would you have a plan A and a plan B? And so they come up with a lot of, a lot of good things that they would do if they were put in that situation. A lot of children had code words that they could text their parents or contact another parent. Um, you know, some of them said, I'd just say I'm gonna get sick in your car if you make me get in your car because I don't feel well. You know, just something as simple as that. But they did a great job. lose my spot here. Um, 39 students required a brief intervention and that's just asking further questions if they disclosed anything or had been thinking about any risky behaviors we would delve into it a little bit more. Um, do our readiness ruler with them to see if they're ready to make some changes and then we'd follow up with those students. There were only 12 referrals to guidance and there were no outside referrals necessary. Now, like I said, we don't know if all of the information was truthful, but it gives us an opportunity to meet with the students one-on-one, -on -one, develop a relationship, and provide them with resource materials to take home. So um, that's, the, that's the positive. I will have more data for you in the fall. We participated in a research study with Dr. Nelson at Children's Hospital. All eighth grade students did a pre espert online anonymous survey with parental permission that went home and they will do a post-op online survey the first week in June. This data will be important to see if there was an increase in the students' knowledge of health implications associated with substance use and 
they will provide the district with a full analysis um, of all of their questions too and uh, results lastly I just wanted um, to update you on the essential school health services grant next year the 2018-19 school year is the final year of this grant a new RFR will come out this fall and I will apply for it on behalf of the district as of June 2019 we will have received one one million eight hundred seventy seven thousand five hundred and twenty two dollars so close to two million dollars for health services since the grants inception in 2001 and that's it does anyone have any questions about anything in the report no you, you oh sorry sure. no go, Rachel oh go Rachel I'm sorry um, so if they answer positive to any of these questions it says it's not shared or put on their record but do parents get notified of that or is it still when this was first coming up, I struggled with that as you, we're programmed to be mandated reporters. I also reporters. want them to know that it's going to be comfortable like I would want to know yeah. but right. at the same time I want her to know that she could go and talk to somebody. Mm -hmm. Right. You know? right and that's the purpose of establishing someone they can go to with questions and talk to and sometimes it is difficult we do encourage them to talk to their parents absolutely um, but in certain situations it's not usually a phone call unless it's something we're very concerned about so I you had mentioned a grant and mr. powers before mentioned two grants I'm wondering if um, somewhere exists a list of grants that the district gets I think um, we hear from folks frequently why are we not applying for these grants mm -hmm. and in reality we are and we get them uh -huh. but we get so caught up in following what the grant needs us to do to maintain having it Scope that right like, that we don't necessarily <laughs> publicize that we received a grant mm -hmm. so I, I think for for a district mm -hmm. our size and the amount of grants we get specifically for health services that's a huge number mm -hmm. um, I, I think maybe educating a little sure. bit more on what grants we have what grants we get and the amount right because any any grant monies that we bring in come through our uh, district treasurer so we'll have a list we can get a list of those okay. we also have one other grant that we got the fluoride mouth rinse grant but that's for all grades two and three to receive uh, weekly fluoride mouth rinse um, Mr. Gell, did you have a question? Yeah, you said the, yes. you said they take an online survey also. This just this year, this was a project with Dr. Nelson at Children's Hospital, and it was an anonymous um, for a pre eighth grade expert. So before they started the expert, it's going to kind of see. It's going to be a little bit of a gauge to see how effective we were with our one on one um, education kind of interview, and see if the the students really benefited from the expert screening so it's not the same questions that you're no. asking in the no yeah. it's a different survey and it includes um, vaping and some other questions so the data will be really interesting when we get it back to share any one, other questions uh, one question I had so you said the average going back um, to, to your original comments an average school has 40 to 100 visits a day to the nurse 240 does, yeah does does that include like the students that have to come down on a regular basis for meds or is that is that se is that separate from that that would include whoever came down for their medication <clears throat> okay so because yep. there are students that come down on a daily basis on a routine right? yeah but not a not a lot for medication anymore because of the time release medications but the students with diabetes obviously they're coming to the health office at least three to four times a day and then yeah. one, my last question would be 
it, and it may be too early in this school year. We may have to wait till the school year closes out. Any idea in terms of, I remember the data that I shared with the committee for the preliminary budget um, when we were advocating for, this, for the uh, adjustment school adjustment counselors. counselors, that last year we had close to 6,000 reports to the nurses for social emotional. Do we know what that number is right now? Currently, um, I think what most of my nurses have told us, and we talked about this this morning at Health Advisory Council, that over two-thirds of our visits in the health office are for psychosocial issues or emotional support. Now, with the little ones, they may just need a walk and uh, a little reassurance and, you know, different things at different levels. But more than two-thirds of the visits that we get are for um support in the, in the way of emotional or psychosocial. Okay. Thank you. That's important to know. Yeah, it really is. So maybe we could do a report out, maybe once the end of the year and you have mm -hmm. all your data, that might be something that we share mm -hmm. with the committee. Sure. Mm -hmm. Can I ask? I'm sorry. How, how do you determine whether it's psychosocial or just Very a bellyache? <laughs> Very some, difficult. Some because kids come down with a bellyache, but you don't know what's right. causing and them. Sometimes it's very difficult to tell. Um, a quick story, I'll, I'll just be real brief, but years ago when I first started, I had a third grader come in, doubled over, and she was, um, my belly, my belly, she was screaming, crying, and I'm like, oh, she might have a heart appendix, you know. I laid her down to do a complete abdominal assessment, take her vital signs, the whole bit, and everything was kind of checking out and not really adding up, and I said, are you, are you worried about anything? No, my belly, my belly. She kept screaming, and I'm, so I called one of the other nurses over. I said, we're going to have to, you know, get in touch with her mom. And finally, I said, are you sure nothing's bothering you? Long division. <laughs> <laughs> so I called her teacher. I said, will you please come down here and tell her she doesn't have to know long division today. She was a little third grader. Um, so it's, but trying to decipher whether it is something bothering them, it does take a little bit of time. Um, and when we log them in, we initially might log them in our, our health software as abdominal pain when they come in. And then we have to add another uh, footnote, <laughs> a diagnosis after when we find out that it is a truly. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm assuming I repeat, repeat right. visits. And then we have our, our frequent flyers, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. we love them, but some of them are challenging. Yep. And, um, <clears throat> But a lot of them do just need that little bit of emotional support. But I will try and tease out some of those numbers sure. for you. That'd be great. Um, so if I could ask, from the, the 40 to 140 you see a day, are, you had mentioned you see students with diabetes three or four times a day. Are they counted three or four times when they appear? Or is that just considered a? So in that range, that's, that's the daily visits per building. So the, the buildings that have diabetic children, they'd be on the higher, higher end, end of that. that. Okay, right. got it. Yeah. All right, good. thank good. you. Thank you, Mrs. Thank Fahey. You, Marie. you and your nurses do a wonderful job. Absolutely, the thank role, you so much. The role of a school nurse has changed dramatically. <laughs> All righty, moving on. We have a personnel update, and Mrs. Gormley couldn't be here she tonight. She could not be here tonight, so. We have Ms. Macedo. We have Ms. Macedo. Thank you. The role of Mary Coleman. And good evening, Madam Chair, um, Superintendent Swenson, and members of the school committee. Um, I have for you an update on the personnel status. And the superintendent has approved the following new appointments and reassignments. Paul Jovalos, Jr., Director of Student Services, effective July 1, 2018. Yes, we'd love to have him come to the podium and okay. say a few words. <laughs> <laughs> I gave him a heads up. <laughs> I guess uh, taking a hint wasn't one of my strengths. Uh, that got me, got me this position, sorry. Uh, good you're evening getting, again. You're getting married soon. You better learn to uh, can't pick up on a hint. And I got an <laughs> offer accepted on a new house today, so a lot, a lot going on, too. Yep. Um, good evening again, Madam Chair, members of the school committee, Superintendent Swenson. Uh, very honored in the... Um, trust that the interview team and Superintendent Swenson have in me, um, but I'd be remiss if I didn't mention that I'm filling some very big little shoes as I, as I enter this, uh, this new position. Uh, Ms. Thomas has been you know, a real mentor over the past two years that I've been here in district, and I think that part of my ability to 
you know, to perform and to, and to do the best that I can is going to come as a result of the great foundation that she's set. Um, I, I've been in quite a few districts uh, in, over my career, and I think that the programs that she's helped to build across the district have been, you know, some of the most robust, you know, that I've, that I've ever experienced. And, um, you know, uh, having two uh, perfect coordinated program reviews in the area of special education uh, is just remarkable. And, you know, just her, you know, openness and, and ability to, you know, to coach people and to really care about what she does is uh, inspiring to me. So, I'd, uh, you know, I really couldn't stand up here and, and be gracious in accepting this position if I didn't mention her and, um, you know, how much she's meant to me over the past couple of years as well. Um, and I look forward to carrying that torch and um, really, you know, working on some key uh, issues in the district, uh, hopefully partnering with Mr. Powers to uh, forward, you know, the, the very time sensitive and, and necessary social emotional learning across the district and really working even outside of the uh, special ed department to um, you know to help to build some bridges and build some supports for our students so uh, you know uh, very humbly accept and, and I'm very uh, you know proud to have this position so thank you very much thank you, thank you. Thank you. And I just want to say about Paul I mean the job that he's done in, in his current role has been outstanding through, through his time here he's really earned the trust of not only the administrative team but also the teachers district-wide. And um, I think people can say superintendent, assistant superintendent are the most difficult jobs in, in a school district, director of student services. You are, you're dealing with a lot of different situations, and a lot of different um, needs. And I know with the soft skills that you have and the way, the knowledge that you have and, and in terms of your ideas about compliance and, and, and district programming and everything else that you bring to the table, I think you're gonna be outstanding. We're very fortunate to have you. Thank you. So welcome Thank back you. in a new role. <laughs> <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'll continue on with new appointments and reassignments. Uh, Megan Glass, Ed Support Professional, effective May 10th, 2018. Resignations. Kevin Martis. Assistant Principal, Mitchell Elementary School, effective June 30th, 2018. Allison Mazzetti, Assistant Principal, Williams Intermediate School, effective June 30th, 2018. The Superintendent has accepted the following resignation for the purpose of retirement. Paula Moriarty, Special Education Teacher, effective August 6, 2018. Marsha Vespa, Secretary at Merrill Elementary School, effective June 30th, 2018, after 24 years of service. Maria Souza, custodian at the Merrill Elementary School, effective June 30th, 2018, after 30 years of service. And this concludes my report. Thank you very Thank much. You, Don't go too far. Um, we have no unfinished business, and we'll start our new business with the energy contract, Ms. Macedo. Thank you very much, and good evening again. Um, usually I'm here to speak to you about gas prices. Um, however, this evening I'm here to speak with you about our energy costs. In the past few years, we've worked directly with a representative from Direct Energy regarding our pricing per kilowatt hour, only for the dis uh, Bridgewater side of the district. Um, in the Raynham side, we use TMLP, the Taunton Municipal Light Plant, and so you know that is already locked up but with the Bridgewater side we have to go out and get pricing so our contract for Bridgewater is due to expire this November November 1st 2018 and Mr. Fox and I have been looking at the pricing available with the Massachusetts state contract also known as combines I know you hear us talk about that a lot um, we're looking at their energy contract um, as well as we've checked out a few other companies um, then and found that the pricing with these other um, places have been a lot lower than our current rate, which is 9.638 cents per kilowatt hour. Now, I've given all of you a sheet so that you can kind of follow these numbers so you don't have to be going crazy. Like, what did she just say? So I'll help you go through that. But I'm not going to read them all, but I just wanted you to have them available. So we anticipate the trend under combines will move, uh, will be more favorable for the school district over the long term. Just the size of the group alone has its benefits in the bidding market. And bidding our requirements will also help to foster competition, which will bring about better pricing for the district. 
The combine's contract will end on September 30th, 2019. So there's a window of time between when our contract ends and when their contract ends, which is about approximately 10 months. And what we're looking to do is to get a price uh, for that 10-month period from combines. Um, which will not be at the current rate that they have. Um, because we weren't involved in that initial combines bid, we're not going to be able to receive the 8.468 cents per kilowatt hour. We would receive a special adjusted pricing, which would probably be somewhat higher than what they're currently using for the 10-month period. This adjusted rate will be determined by combines through the vendor. While the short-term pricing will not be at the combine's current rate, we anticipate that we'll receive an adjusted price that will be similar to the new pricing we just received from our representative at Direct Energy, and that was around 10.814 um, 10 cents per kilowatt hours just for a 10-month period. And as you can see down below, um, it the rate for direct energy went down as we increased the number of months that we'd have to lock into a contract. Uh, the lowest being a 48-month contract, four years, um, at 9.478 cents per kilowatt hours, which is just a little bit under what we're currently paying right now. And it's a long time to lock, you know, to lock that rate in for. We are looking for pricing for the period, again, of uh, November 8th through September 30th, 2019 when their uh, combines contract will end and we want to do that because um, we want to be able to get in with them so that when they're ready to either renew that because they do have a renewal um, year set aside in their bid or if they decide to go out to bid after the September before the September 30th comes up we want to be a part of that bid so that we will be able to enjoy the rates that they currently, that they will be enjoying. Uh, right now we're going to get some kind of a blended rate because we were kind of Johnny late to the scene, but if we get in from the get-go, then we'll probably be able to experience some very good rates. Um, I can't say that it's going to be at 8.468 cents uh, per kilowatt hours, but I don't foresee it jumping up, ne neither does Paul. We both don't foresee it jumping up so high that it would get to the rates that we've currently been given. And I think, you know, if we get ourselves set up with combines over the long term, I think what we're going to see is that we're going to have some better rates and we're going to be able to um, be in a program where we're fostering more competition than the way we currently do it now. Um, so while we can't be certain, uh, we anticipate that joining them will provide the district with better pricing. Uh, than by going it alone for the long term. So what I would recommend and, and like to get a recommendation from the school committee to go ahead with uh, working with combines and getting a price so that we can get in um, into this program with them and move forward. Mrs. Kaparis? Okay, so uh, that being said, I would like to offer a motion to authorize Ms. Macedo in her capacity as Director of Business Services to enter into procurement process with combines for the ENE 43 electricity statewide contract. Motion by Mrs. Kaparis, second, second by Mr. Gelfi. Any discussion? Mr. Swenson, any recommendation? I, it would come with my recommendation. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? So voted. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We like to save money. That's good. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Next, we have a vote to approve the 2018-2019 school committee meeting schedule, which is enclosed in your package. And all meetings are scheduled for the fourth Wednesday of the month, unless otherwise noted. Uh, and we do alternate between the Rainham Middle School and the Regional High School. And I'd just like a motion to approve the meeting schedule. Motion by Mrs. Holbrook, second by Mrs. Scoparis. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? So voted. Thank you. And uh, we'd also like to vote to reschedule the June school committee meeting to June 13th, just to be in a more timely fashion with the end of school. And that's a motion. Next month. Right. Next month. Correct. Right. June. Yeah. A uh, motion to reschedule that June meeting. Motion by Mrs. Coparis, second by Mrs. King. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? So voted. Thank you. And I'd 
Okay, motion, a vote to approve the last day of school. Mm -hmm. um, motion to approve the last day of school for high school seniors as May 24th, 2018. Mm -hmm. And the last day of school for grades pre-K through grade 11 on June 20th, 2018. Motion by Mrs. King, second, second by Mr. Hammond. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? So voted. Thank you. And moving on to the approval of warrants. We're going to do the payroll warrants dated April 26th, 2018 and May 10th, 2018. Motion to approve the warrants by Mrs. Skilparis, second by Mr. Gelfi. Uh, Two abstentions? No, you're just taking the vote with who's here. Right. Okay. Uh, All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? We don't even say nope. that. Okay, don't even perfect. Say that. All right, moving on. Passes. Passes. Um, general ledger warrants dated April 26, 2018, and May 10th, 2018. Motion by Mr. Hammond. Second by Mrs. King. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Thank you. And now we come to the acceptance of grants and gifts. And just like Mrs. Riley, who's in the audience, we love the gifts. Uh, oh, hi, Mrs. <laughs> Riley. Thank you, pleasure. Madam Chair. <laughs> We're, as always, I'll be asking for a vote of consensus after I read all of our gifts that have come in uh, over the course of the last month. First is a donation of $50 from Jessica Davenport via Traveler's Insurance, which will be donated to Rainham Middle School. We also have seven flat screen uh, monitors donated by Mr. Al Correa to, again, Rainham Middle School. We have uh, transportation to BSU for our um, city labs, courtesy of Bridgewater State University, so they're going to help us with those transportation costs. We also have a very generous gift from the uh, La Liberty Parents Organization for the purchase of a Chromebook uh, cart in the amount of $7,836.50. And finally, um, 10 Old Colony YMCA summer camp scholarships. This is something that Old Colony does every summer, and these uh, scholarships will go to students of need. And that's all we have for gifts for this month. Very good. Motion to approve the grants and gifts mentioned by Mr. Swanson, motion by Mrs. Holbrook, second by Mr. Gelfi. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? So voted. Thank, Thank you. Abstaining. Uh, you're abstaining from just the LPO. La Liberty yeah. the LPO vote. All right. Abstention by Mrs. King. All right. And now we come to the part of the agenda for public comment. Do we have anyone with a public comment? Going once, going twice, very good. All right. Um, now we just have some dates to remember. Our Excel graduation is Thursday, June 1st at 7 o'clock at the high school. Our May 31st. May 31st. Oh, I'm sorry. Thursday, May 31st at 7 o'clock. That's a Thursday, yep. Mm -hmm. Our high school graduation will be Sunday, June 3rd at 1 o'clock. Mm -hmm. June 19th will be the middle school graduation. The Rainham Middle School graduation will be at 5 o'clock, and the BMS will be at 6 o'clock. The Rainham Memorial Day Parade will take place on May 26th at 10 a.m., and the Bridgewater Memorial Day Parade will be held on May 28th at 10.30 a.m. And with that, we'll have a motion to adjourn. Madam Chair, oh, I'm sorry. adjournment, sure. if I could. Um, so as we all know, this budget season's been difficult for for this group and, and the towns, but I want to specifically give a shout out to the parents of Bridgewater who, um, who've who taken the time for the past few months to, to go to our council meetings, speak on our students' behalf, on our district's behalf, um, know that that is greatly appreciated by those of us at this table, um, the district as a whole, so I just wanted to mention those folks that Great. stepped Thank up you for us. Thank so. you. Very good. All right. And after that, a motion to adjourn at 825. Motion so by moved. Mr. Gelfi, second by Mrs. Holbrook. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Anyone opposed? So voted. Thank you very much.